Okay, so this is my Brabant, and it's built using two eBay stepper motors and a propeller chip, a standard servo, and a Palulu Wixel that allows it to be controlled and programmed wirelessly by a computer. It's got a Sharpie marker, and it's going to draw on that shopping bag. Now here is the console in which I'm running the propeller forth, and I've got the program in there that I'm going to run. So I hit enter, and the robot will begin executing the program. Okay. Now, the thing about the uh, pen holder is it's made out of a piece of brass tubing cut about an inch long and then split up the middle, soldered to a paper clip, and it just goes through the servo horn and grabs the pen. And that means that there's quite a bit of slop in the mechanism. Uh, the hole it goes in is pretty good size, but I mean deep, but that means that as the pen raises and lowers, there's a little bit of lateral play. Uh, the other thing is the amount of pen depth. You just got to develop by trial and error. You want enough pressure so that as the robot moves, it pushes down on the paper and draws, but not so much that it actually lifts the robot's wheels off the ground, because otherwise what happens is the robot will start to have wheel slip and the, the letters come out terrible. Okay? So as you can see, it's got three letters drawn, and it's doing the fourth. We're already up to two minutes. What can you say? It's a little bit slow. Uh, I'm using Propforth and a robot control language by Nick Lordy. Uh, he basically wrote a language for doing most of the low-level driver routines to control the stepper motors, as well as, with some calibration, do right turns, uh, turnabouts, and forward. I took the Propforth servo library and use that to do the uh, pen up, pen down with the with the draw tool. The servo library and Nick Lordy's uh, library have a conflict in the, one of the cog allocations. So I resolved that. It's pretty simple. Um, other than that, you know, this was a good fourth project because really having a robot that you can control remotely completely you, is pretty good. Now you'll notice that the robot is moving at an angle up the page. It's not moving... A straight line. That's because there's wheel slip over time, and it builds a little bit of error over time, uh, and doesn't quite uh, match up with the the previous line. Okay, that is somewhat unavoidable. Uh, if you had a heavier robot with more powerful motors, that probably wouldn't happen. But this is a very light robot. It's it, these are uh, not very powerful stepper motors, and um, the the robot's sort of light and it's prone to wheel slip, but there's always like a sh a sweet space, a sweet spot with all of the um, these sort of things where you know the heavier the robot gets, the more powerful battery it needs, the heavier its batteries, then you have other problems with wheels. So it's it's always hard to say till you actually build a robot to know how well it fares with wheel slip or not. I'm actually very pleased overall with the repeatability of this robot because. It's only lost maybe a couple of degrees after a lot of turns. And this is completely open loop. It's not doing any kind of feedback mechanism whatsoever. Now it's doing that. And uh, the other thing is it took an insane amount of time to actually get this all calibrated to do the whole thing. <laughs> it's it's really um, a lot of trial and error, a lot of just experimentation, and a lot of trying and failing. This is probably, um, oh, I don't know how many hours I've been at this. So...
But there you go. And it's the fourth Hello World program.